Hi everybody, it's Mike from Inflatable Border, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Hydrus Joyride and Joyride XL all-around paddle boards. Hydrus Board Tech is an Idaho-based paddleboard company that focuses on function-first designs for both their inflatable paddle boards and their hardboards. The Joyride and Joyride XL are high-performance all-around paddle boards. They have excellent construction, great performance on the water, they're very versatile, and they come with a lifetime warranty. For 2023, Hydrus has updated their entire line of inflatable paddle boards with a brand new construction. Starting from the inside, we have a new woven drop stitch core. The woven core is lighter and more rigid than the previous knitted core. Outside of the core, we now have a new dual layer fusion PVC shell that's made with composite reinforced PVC. The composite reinforcement is the same as on their previous generation of paddle boards, but the big difference is a switch from a hand glued double layer layup to a machine laminated fusion double layer layup. To make sure that the Joyride and Joyride XL remained just as rigid as the previous versions, Hydrus also introduced a new carbon fiber fabric stringer that runs the length of the board both on the deck and on the hull. The carbon fiber fabric cannot stretch like the PVC material can, so this helps reduce the amount of flex that's even possible in this board. By using stringers on the top and bottom of the board, Hydrus has been able to apply that flex reduction across the entire length of the board without adding significant amounts of weight. The top and bottom of the board are joined together with a heat welded seam, and then that inner rail band is covered with an outer rail band made of the reinforced PVC, as well as seam reinforcement pin lines on the top and bottom edges. All of this to produce a highly durable, highly stiff construction. With the welded seams and the high quality materials, Hydrus recommends a maximum pressure of 20 PSI for the Joyride and Joyride XL. All of this new construction uses the most advanced materials available today, and it's helped drop the weight of the Joyride XL by almost seven pounds. Now with the weight reduction, I was curious to see how these new materials and constructions would stack up in our bin test. So we inflated the Joyride and the Joyride XL to their maximum 20 PSI, put them on the sawhorses and loaded them up with 170 pounds. We found that the Joyride only bent 1.1 inches and the Joyride XL 0.98 inches of bend with 170 pounds. This makes the Joyride XL one of the stiffest paddle boards we've ever tested. On the water, I couldn't feel the Joyride or the Joyride XL bend at all unless I was bouncing up and down on it with my full weight. Whether I was standing on the board, walking on it, paddling, sprinting, it felt incredibly stiff, almost like a hardboard. When I was jumping up and down on it, there was some flex, but as soon as I stopped, the board came to a smooth halt and was immediately stable again. All of this is great news, and it's made even better by the fact that Hydrus backs up the construction of their boards with a lifetime warranty. The Joyride and Joyride XL are both all-around style paddle boards. The Joyride is 11 feet long, 32 and a half inches wide, and 6 inches thick. The Joyride XL is 11 and a half feet long, 34 and a half inches wide, and also 6 inches thick. The Joyride has a 350 pound weight capacity and weighs 23 pounds. The Joyride XL has a 400 pound weight capacity and weighs 25 and a half pounds. Now both the Joyride and the Joyride XL measured about a half inch wider than their specified size. And that's okay, I didn't notice any difference in performance other than increasing stability. And both of these boards are extremely stable. They both have very parallel sides, wide noses, and medium to wide square tails. These features, along with the stiff construction, all add up to extreme stability. Both boards have a brushed texture foam deck pad that's extremely comfortable whether you're on bare feet or sitting down on the board. However, it doesn't grip quite as well as a textured deck pad. At the tail, the deck pad does change to a diamond texture pattern for increased grip. It also has a raised kick pad and a raised indexing pad down the center of the tail so that you can more easily put your foot in the right spot for pivot turns without having to look down at your feet. Because both of these boards are extremely stable and because of their performance characteristics, I've even used the Joyride XL for up to class three whitewater paddling when loaded up for an overnight trip. I've got a write-up about that trip and the whitewater experience over at inflatableboarder.com and the link is below in the video description.
With extreme stability and a slightly wider shape, I was curious to see how these boards did in our speed testing. We use a speed coach, which is a GPS device designed specifically for stand-up paddleboarding to get our instantaneous speeds while we're sprinting and paddling so that we can compare them to our other boards. Even with their very stable and slightly wide shapes, these boards are both extremely fast. I was able to paddle the Joyride at a sustained 5.6 mile per hour sprint and the Joyride XL at 5.4 miles per hour. For top speeds, I actually hit the 6.0 mile per hour mark on the Joyride and 5.8 with the Joyride XL. These results put the Hydrus Joyride and Joyride XL at the top of our list for speed for all around paddle boards and even beating out some touring paddle boards. Now, while you can paddle this fast on these paddle boards, it does take a lot of effort to do. So what we're really more interested in with an all around is how efficiently it paddles at slower speeds. At a casual paddling cadence of about 25 strokes per minute, both the Joyride and the Joyride XL had an average cruising speed of about 3.7 miles per hour. Now this isn't the fastest result for an all-around paddleboard, but it is certainly in the upper half. And while paddling at these slower speeds, we found both the Joyride and the Joyride XL to be very efficient. The Joyride was moving approximately 22 feet per stroke before slowing down, and the Joyride XL was moving about 21 feet per stroke before slowing down. When you compare this to the length of the board, the Joyride has a gliding ratio of 2.0 board lengths per stroke, and the Joyride XL has a gliding ratio of 1.8 board lengths per stroke. We do this so that we can compare them to other paddle boards of different sizes. In this case, both boards are extremely efficient, once again, topping our list of all around paddle boards, and the Joyride is in the same efficiency category as many touring paddle boards that are designed to be moved very quickly and very efficiently. When talking about our maneuverability and tracking test, I usually mention that we use all of the fins that come with a paddleboard because this is what most people are going to be doing as they get started paddleboarding or starting with a new board. In the case of the Joyride and Joyride XL, they both come with three different fins, but only one fin box. So for our testing, we chose to use the 9-inch Touring fin on both boards. This most closely matches the size and shape of the other center fins that come with most other paddle boards. Now by using the 9-inch Touring fin, I did expect these boards to err a little bit towards tracking ability and slightly less maneuverability. But what I actually found is that both boards were extremely maneuverable and both of them also had very good tracking. In fact, they were so close together, their scores are identical. The Joyride and Joyride XL both did very well in our maneuverability test. We do a 360 degree standing circle and we count the number of forward sweep strokes it takes us to complete that turn. In the case of both boards, it was only five and a half paddle strokes. And that beats our running average by an entire stroke. Now by reversing that paddle stroke, you can turn these boards even faster with about three and a half to four paddle strokes or by stepping back to the tail and lifting the nose, you can swing these paddle boards around 180 degrees in a single stroke. When it comes time to stop spinning pivot turns and you wanna move in a straight line, these boards also do extremely well. Both the Joyride and Joyride XL crushed it in our 10 stroke tracking test. We take 10 strokes on a single side of the board and measure the difference between our original course and the new course using a compass. Both of these boards did extremely well with an average course deviation of 11 degrees each. Now this once again puts them at the top of our all around paddle boards in tracking and it puts them almost to the level of a dedicated touring board. And we can thank the stiff construction, the parallel shape, and the high quality nine inch fin for this great tracking performance. As we've seen so far, Hydrosys Function First design gives these boards excellent performance on the water. Another aspect of that is looking at how these boards are intended to be used and giving them a feature set that matches that use. Because of that, the Hydra's Joyride and Joyride XL don't have quite as many bells and whistles as some other all-around paddle boards, but they do have a great versatile set of features built onto the board and included with it. There's a large cargo area on the front of the board with a bungee cord spread out between six different D-rings. A little bit closer to the standing area, you'll find two more D-rings with another bungee cord between them. This is designed to hold water bottles, sunscreen, or anything else that you want to keep very close at hand while you're paddling. The deck has a large, comfortable deck pad that's kept free of distractions or things to get in your way if you wanted to lay out or do some sub yoga. 
and behind the standing area, there are four more D-rings that can be used for additional cargo. Now, there are no accessory mounts built onto the Joyride or Joyride XL. However, each of them does come with a stick-on GoPro mount. These GoPro mounts can be put on any of the flat PVC surfaces of the board, and they do actually work quite well if you install them properly. You want to make sure the board is inflated and then clean the area you're going to put the GoPro mount with a little alcohol swab. Place the GoPro mount on the board and then put some weight on it. You want to leave this alone for at least an hour to allow the glue to cure. Now, I prefer to wait even longer overnight if I can, and by doing so, I've not had any issues of these mounts coming off the boards. Both the Joyride and Joyride XL have three handles on the top of the board. This is a big step up from the previous version that only had the single center handle. And this makes it much easier to buddy carry the board to get down to the water or if you were to be loaded up for a longer trip. At the front of the board, there are also two handles on the deck pad that can be used by a passenger. They can also be used if you are learning to paddle whitewater and occasionally need some help holding onto your board through some of the trickier parts. Under the nose of the board, we do have an additional D-ring for anchoring or towing if you were to need to do that. There's also a single universal standard fin box or US fin box under the tail of the board. Now, while the Joyride and Joyride XL might seem to be a little bit light in some built-in features, there is actually quite a bit here and enough room to bring everything you need with you on the water. The rear D-rings can be fixed with a bungee cord if you want to do that. They can also be used to tie down larger dry bags or even coolers or milk crates. Along with the board, you do get a coiled angle leash. Now, Hydrus is known for their river paddle boards as well as their flat water boards. And if you are getting one of these with the intent of using it on the river, I highly recommend you go check out our blog post on leashes in the comments below. There are times where you do want to use a leash, times where you need to use a specific leash, and times where you don't want to use a leash. So please check that out and keep yourself safe on the water. As I've mentioned before, the Joyride and Joyride XL come with three different fins as well. You do get a nine inch touring fin. This is a stiff fiberglass based fin with a plastic coating. You get a six and a half inch keel fin. Once again, we have a composite fin with a plastic coating and the keel fin actually has built in quick release and quick installation spring loaded ball bearings. So you don't have to use any thin bolts or nuts to attach this to your board. And lastly, you do get a four and a half inch gummy fin. This fin is soft and flexible and designed to be used in very shallow areas where you may be striking the bottom of a river or lake. The last two items you'll get with the Hydrus Joyride or Joyride XL are a single chamber double action hand pump and the Hydrus Mothership bag. The Mothership bag is made with a heavy duty nylon material and heavy duty zippers. There is a large main storage compartment with an interior pocket for your fins. These pockets do not have zippers, they only close with a single piece of Velcro, so you do want to be careful when you're opening your bag as you can sometimes have your smaller items fall out. The bags have an extremely comfortable padded backpack harness and two compression straps that actually go all the way around the board to give you the best possible carrying comfort while you're moving the board around. Neither the Joyride nor the Joyride XL automatically come with a paddle. Because Hydrus likes to focus on performance and making sure that everybody has the right product that they need, they don't want to burden you with a paddle that may not be right for you. However, they do offer their Hydrus Tough Blade paddle at an incredible discount if you were to bundle it with the paddle board. The Tough Blade paddle is a carbon fiber three-piece paddle that uses a carbon fiber shaft. It has a molded fiberglass handle that uses a compression collar to adjust. It also has an indexing groove on the back and length markers on the front. And one unique thing about this handle is the molded grip. It has these little finger grooves. And I have small hands. I was a little bit worried when I first got this paddle that it might feel a little bit funky. Uh, however, as soon as you start paddling with it, you don't notice those grooves, but they do help keep your hand in position. Now the blade is made with Hydrus's proprietary Armalite material. I've tried and tried and tried and cannot get them to tell me what their Armalite is. I have done a little bit of digging and it seems to be some combination of composite materials, fiberglass and carbon, along with a thermoplastic coating. Uh, all in all, it's actually fairly lightweight, significantly lighter than a typical nylon blade, and it's extremely stiff. This blade is 96 square inches and has a single dihedral to help direct water flow. 
It's also extremely durable. I've been using this one for white water, and while there is some river rash on it, uh, it looks extremely good, much better than my previous fiberglass white water paddle. At 96 square inches with a stiff blade and a relatively stiff shaft, this paddle does put out a lot of power, but it might be a little bit uncomfortable for smaller paddlers going longer distances. Again, Hydrus doesn't force this paddle on you, but it is a great option for average to larger paddlers and those on the river. The Hydrus Joyride and Joyride XL are high performance all around paddle boards, but they're still extremely beginner friendly and family friendly. As a larger paddler, I'm actually extremely comfortable on both the Joyride and Joyride XL. The Joyride XL does provide more volume and stability, and it's a great choice if you are wanting to bring along a friend or family member, a pet, or a lot of cargo for an overnight trip, or even a you know, long destination picnic trip where you might want to bring a cooler or fishing equipment. The Joyride can do all of those things as well, it's just a little bit smaller so you'll have a slightly more limited capacity and slightly less stability. But when I say slightly less stability, I really do mean slightly. I've actually mistaken these two boards for each other on a recent river trip, and when I went to go pick up what I thought was the Joyride XL and start paddling, I got three quarters of the way through our trip before I realized, wait a minute, I'm on the Joyride and not the Joyride XL. That's how stable these boards are. Both of these boards are also covered by Hydrus's lifetime warranty, and that covers the board against any manufacturing defects that may happen over the reasonable life of the board, which is typically around 10 years. That lifetime warranty is also backed by Hydrus's excellent customer service. As a small company, if you call Hydrus, you'll often end up talking to Jason, the owner, and he loves to help people get on the water, helping them choose the right equipment, helping them with any issues they're having, and overall, Hydrus is known for their excellent customer service. Hopefully I've answered all of your questions about the Hydrus Joyride and Joyride XL. If I haven't, leave us a comment below. And while you're down there, you'll find a link to the written reviews for both of these paddle boards. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up below and go ahead and click the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our video content. If you are interested in purchasing the Hydrus Joyride or Joyride XL, we'd appreciate it if you'd use the link below. That doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help support our channel in bringing you more video content, written reviews, and educational material. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to wear your PFDs, and happy paddling!